In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All thanks and praises are due to Allah. We seek his help and his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from whatever evil our hearts conceal and from the consequences of our evil deeds. Whoever Allah grants guidance, no one can lead astray. And whoever chooses to go astray, no one can guide but Allah. I attest and testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah with no partners and that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran in chapter 3 verse 102, O you who, o you who have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared and regard Allah as he should be regarded and do not die except in a state of submission to him. Allah the Almighty also says, he says, and fear Allah and know that Allah is with the pious. Chapter 2, verse 194. We will continue in the same subject we started last Friday. As I mentioned to you before, I have been trying to summarize certain books and articles of Muslim scholars and their observations about the Quran and that it is a unique book. Because everyone who reflects on the Quran and meditates on the Quran will find wonders and everyone is different in his ability to extract those wonders. We talked before about the observations of Wahiruddin Khan and in the last, last Friday we started talking about the observations of Dr. Lawrence Brown. The first observation, just to summarize from last time, was the preservation of the Quran and I give multiple pieces of evidence to that. So I don't have to go back to those details. The fact that the Quran is preserved as a continuous oral tradition from the first generation under the supervision of the Muslim government because when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died, he had control of all of Arabia and his caliphs, his successors, had, had control over Arabia and much of Asia as well, and going into Northern Africa. And Muslims were widespread throughout this whole region. And it was the tradition of the Muslims from the very beginning, by the teaching of the, of the Prophet Muhammad, to memorize the Quran. Not only do we read it, but we memorize it. And we stress upon the correct pronunciation of every letter. And this is just how it is from the very beginning. So a whole generation under the supervision of the government did that practice from the very beginning and it was transmitted generation after generation from father to son, from teacher to disciple to student. And there were classes and halaqas, the Christians called halaqa, to teach the Quran. People listened to the Quran in their prayers. The Quran was cited in every aspect of life and in all the books of sciences and so on. So Quran was preserved as a continuous oral tradition and the written form was only supplementary. It was written from the time of the Prophet Muhammad for added preservation and assurance. And he had his 50 to 60 scribes who wrote every verse as it was revealed. But Muslims relied on the oral tradition very much and it was, nobody would lead the prayer, for instance, unless he would memorize the Quran to, to, be, to qualify to lead the prayer. He would memorize the Quran from beginning to end. And children at younger age memorized the whole Quran as well. So the written form, was, although it was supplementary, but our written record of our book still excels and supersedes and is stronger than the written form of any other tradition and religion on earth. All the monotheistic religions, if we take Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, who are classified as monotheistic, although if you look into the reality, you will find that pure monotheism is only in Islam. Our manuscript record, despite the fact that we consider it as supplementary and not the and not the, 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 the foundation of preservation of the Qur'an, still 
our manuscript record excels the record of any other religion. Why is that? Because through the discovery or even of non-Muslims, as I quoted to you, the Corpus Quranicum project of Germany, that they have more than, up till now they've gathered all more than 4,000 pages of the Quran dating to the first 168 years. And we know for sure, and that's all, you can also go to the, to the references and, and do your own research. We also know that we have manuscripts dating to the first century, to the first 100 years, covering the whole Quran as well. That you don't find with any other of the monotheistic religions. You will find a huge gap between the founder of that religion and the first complete manuscript. For instance, let me quote to you what the New Oxford Annotated Bible states. They say, they say scholars generally agree that the Gospels were written 40 to 60 years after the death of Jesus. While the Quran was written under the supervision and the command and order of the Prophet Muhammad himself, the founder of the religion, the Prophet himself, he overlooked the writing of the Quran. It was all written during his life. While in other religions, the writings are thought to have taken place 40 to 60 years after the death of Jesus, for instance, in Christianity. And who was it written by? The New Oxford Annotated Bible states, they are not eyewitness or contemporary accounts of Jesus' life and teachings. So even those people who wrote them, the biography and who those people are is not very clear. And they were not eyewitnesses. This is basically the understanding of the scholars. Yes, if you go to the common understanding of Christians in general, the layman, they would think, that the Bible was written by Jesus or something or his disciples. No, this is not the case. Nor was it, nor was it written by Jesus. And it's not one Bible, of course. It's, uh, the the can canonical Bibles are like four. And they're depending on the, on the Christian sects. You can have different books uh, that are canonized in different sects. So at least for us, it's one version. It was written under the supervision and care of the prophet himself. And we have the manuscripts that backdate all the way to him. The Birmingham manuscript dates back to his, to his lifetime and the lifetime of his companions. The Birmingham, that's the, one, that's the oldest manuscript that was discovered thus far. And they're still discovering. And I'm sure they will discover multiple manuscripts that date back to the life of the Prophet Muhammad himself. But if you want the whole Quran, we have manuscripts that cover the first one, within the first 100 years. The manuscripts of Sana'a, for instance, in Yemen, those are within the first 25 to 50 years and those cover the whole Quran because basically they are 14,000 pages found in the, in the mosque of Sana'a. That's in one mosque. In one mosque, they found this amount and it was preserved because it was hidden until that storm unearthed and, 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 and uh, basically showed all these manuscripts. Um, we read also in a a statement written by a scholar called Randall Price in his book titled Searching for the Original Bible, he says, he says the earliest sources, whether oral or written, of the Hebrew Bible, talking now about what, they, what is called the Old Testament, what I talked about before was basically the New Testament. He says the earliest sources, whether oral or written, of the Hebrew Bible disappeared over time. Now this is another thing, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah that our manuscripts date back to the first century and first 50 years, 50, for first 25 years after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And there was no time, there was no gap in time where the Quran was lost. It never happened. While here, by the admission of Western scholars, he says the earliest sources, whether oral or written, even the oral, was lost at some period of time of the Hebrew Bible disappeared over time because of the fragility of media, because of wars, especially the destruction of the first and second temples and other intentional destructions. So we can rely and be sure 
and be confident that we are reciting today what was taught by the Prophet Muhammad to the first generation and what he has revealed, what, what he has received from his, from his creator. This is the first point. It took me too long to summarize this point. Uh, I will complete this part of the talk and uh, I'll complete this subject in the second part of this talk. Thank you. Astaghfirullah Azza wa Jalla wa Lakum. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, we thank Allah and we praise Him. We seek Allah's help and guidance, we seek His forgiveness and protection from the evil of our own selves and the evil of our deeds. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomever chooses to go astray, no one can guide but Allah. I bear witness that there's none worthy of worship but Allah without any partners and that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Allah the Almighty says, O you who have believed, fear Allah and regard him as he should be feared and regard. Do not die except in a state of submission. Quran chapter 3 verse 102. The second point that I'd like to summarize to you from the observations of Professor or Dr. Lawrence Brown was that he mentioned that the Quran only came from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, after he had passed the age of 40. And that most people, even at that time especially, 40 is you're approaching basically the end of your life or the latter stage of your life. And normally your personality is fixed by that time and your traits are well known and you, nobody would want to tarnish his reputation and expose to himself, expose himself to being called a liar and expose himself to animosity and hatred by people and go through a struggle which he doesn't know, is he going to be successful? Is he going to even live to finish it or not? Or start a mission at that age? But this is what happened. Not only that, but he's coming to teach the whole world and he never read a book, was not able to read or write. Never did he read or write and now he's coming to teach the pagans about their creator and about this creation and about the reality of life. Not only that, but he's also coming to teach people of other religions, the masters and the scholars and the experts in other religions. He's telling them the rights and wrongs within their own scriptures. Nobody would do something like this. You would not go against public opinion, especially not against the experts in any field especially if you do not have any kind of educational background yourself. Not only him, but the whole of Arabia, there was no kind of educational institutions in the whole of Arabia. The Bible was not translated, as I showed you in a previous talk before, the Bible was not even translated until one to 200 years after the Prophet Muhammad. So he cannot really plagiarize from the Bible because it was just oral tradition in Arabia at the time. And even the Christian sects, that lived in Arabia were not the common mainstream Christianity. They were mostly the Nestorians, and there was another sect, I don't recall the name. So they had different beliefs from mainstream Christianity. But you will find the Quran actually, when it debates certain principles and dogma of other religions, it actually debates and argues with the mainstream ideas in that, in that belief. Because that's what most people are following and, be do, and believe in. It doesn't normally argue and debate the ideas that will die with time, and they have died. Those sects basically have died with time. <clears throat> also, the language of the Prophet Muhammad and his literal abilities and eloquence is at a totally different level from the Quran and any Muslim even today, even with our weakness in Arabic language, we can tell the difference between the style of the Quran and the style of his saying. He himself would tell them to write down this, which is the Quran, and not write down his own sayings. Initially, that's what he did. He would even tell them, whoever wrote anything that I taught other than the Quran, should wipe it, should erase it, and only write the Quran. He did this to make sure that nothing gets mixed. You don't mix it, his teachings with the teachings of the Quran. Obviously, he was 
telling the people that these are the actual words of the Creator, while these are my words. Yes, they are by inspiration from the Creator, but what deserves to be preserved down to the letter are the actual words of the Creator because they are the basis of this religion. The core of this religion relies within the Quran and the Sunnah, the sayings of the Prophet, basically supplement that. Also the Quran broke many if not most of all the pre-existing literary rules. For instance, Arabs up until the Quran came knew two types of literary styles, the prose and poetry. But the Quran came up with a totally different style that is neither this or that. And that is why even people who study Arabic language right now in institutions, they classify the Arabic language or liter uh, literary works into prose, poetry, and the Quran. Because it is totally unique. It's not this style or that style. If you look at the Quran, it is not divided into chapters. We don't call them chapters. We call them surahs. Surah is basically comes from sur means almost like a fort or a high wall that surrounds something. It is basically like a, a very elevated fence or wall that surrounds something that is very precious. Indicating that the contents of every chapter, we don't call them chapter, the contents of every surah are something that is very valuable and this basically surah would encompass the, those meanings. And you would find that even those verses of the Quran, they are not necessarily the end of the sentence. For instance, you can see, Let's start from the beginning. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm deen Here the sentence end, ends. But that's divided into three verses. So the end of the verse is not necessarily the end of the sentence. And you would see that Iyaka na'budu and then Iyaka nasta'in. One sentence but two verses and so on. So it was unique in that as well. And then as I mentioned to you before, the way it was written and the order it was constructed in is totally different because you will find some verses that come in the middle of the chapter of the surah and some verses will come at the end but then later on, some verses will come at the beginning. So the way it is written in the Quran as we read it today is not the same chronological order it was revealed. And that's impossible for any human being to write any even simple article, two pages, and ask that person, I want you to write the last sentence first, the conclusion, and then write the middle, and then a year later write what, uh, the introduction, the ideas will be mixed in your head. You cannot make it go in harmony. Not only that, but the revelations were also linked to certain events that happened to the Prophet or to the Muslim community or outside of Arabia. So basically, the events were not under the control of the Prophet Muhammad. Things would happen, like Rome, sort of Rome, for instance, talks about what happened between the Romans and the Persians. Um, you have some uh, incidents talking about his migration, some verses talking about his migration, some things talking about the battle of Badr, the battle of Uhud, Th things talking about pilgrimage, things talk uh, verses talking about certain questions that were posed to him. He doesn't control these events and the subject, but still, despite the variation in time and variation in his conditions and the variation in the events, you read the chapter, it goes all in harmony from beginning to end. Not only that, scholars who of tafsir, uh, of, of Qur'an exegesis, they have actually gone through linking each surah with the next one, each chapter with the next one, and each verse with the following verse and the one before it, and the whole theme of the chapter from beginning to end. It's quite amazing. How could something that was compiled over 23 years based on events that were outside of the control of the, of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and constructed in an order that is totally different from any other work that was written in human history, come with this kind of uh, harmony and eloquence. So basically, these are the, some of the points that I wanted to mention today, but there's some more points, inshallah. I will leave till next time. We will conclude this khutbah with an invocation to Allah. So Rizwan, you can cl close.